our next speaker um, is joining us all the way from snowy Ottawa, and it is Magno Logan. He is Magno Logan, and uh, he is a, a information security specialist for Trend Micro. He specializes in cloud, container, and application security. And you can't spell cloud without API. So today he's going to talk about API Security 101. Um, I hope everyone can uh, hear me and see me okay. Uh, thanks everyone for joining and, and thanks for having me, Sons. Uh, once again, this is kind of my third uh, summit this year. So that's uh, interesting. But yeah, today I'm going to talk about API Security 101, uh, tools, tips, and tricks, and, and how to start your API security journey, right? I always enjoy... Um, Can you hear me? I think I'm frozen. No, it's okay. Yeah. Um, we can hear you. Okay, sounds good. Um, yeah, I always enjoy talking about like one-on-one topics and and how to uh, start with them because every everybody that's new in information security and wants to learn a new topic, they can uh, watch my presentations and and get right away uh, with it. But yeah, let's get on. Okay. Okay. Work. Um, so yeah, uh, my name is Magno Logan. You can find me on social media on Twitter, GitHub, or LinkedIn as, as Magno Logan. And I'm information security specialist and senior threat researcher for Trend Micro. Uh, currently doing some cloud and container security research and some open source security as well. Uh, there is some blog posts coming up uh, very soon. Um, I'm also an instructor on the security coding and DevSecOps training. Um, I taught that before on other uh, languages as well. And I'm involved with OWASP since 2011, right? So I've been a chapter leader for five years there back in Brazil and, and now in Canada here helping uh, develop all the chapters, the OWASP Ottawa, Toronto as well. I'm speaking there next month and, and yeah, different things going on. But I also have a blog post, a uh, uh, blog where I post articles uh, around application security and, and cloud security as well. Um, there is also all my previous presentations that are there and all my contact information. So feel free to take a look and, and reach out to me if you have any questions. The agenda for today is going to be about motivation and some recent incidents around API security, right? So we're going to cover really the 101, how APIs are created and why, and uh, some types, different types of authentication, and some open source projects, some kind of guidelines and checklists that you can have, such as the Mind API to start your API security journey. We're also going to cover the OWASP Juice Shop, which is a great tool for learning not just application security, but API as well. We're going to talk about the OWASP Top 10 for APIs, which was released in 2019. And then I'm going to cover some tools, some uh, practical references, and, and some tricks as well. So the motivation for this presentation came three years ago, I think, but basically when uh, first, uh, when I moved to Canada and I started working as an organization where I was the first security application security analyst um, and they had over 300 developers. And basically everything was done using APIs, right? So you had the front end, and, and everything else was API. And although I had some previous experience on application security and API testing before, um, I, I didn't think myself as an expert on APIs. And I don't think myself now, but I think I have improved that so far. So I had to improve my game, right? So I had to research and, and understanding different uh, type of authentication, vulnerabilities on APIs and all that stuff. So. Um, since since 2018 that I've been doing a, a lot more research on APIs, 
but also um, the second motivation for this talk it's basically uh, trend micro releases every year this security predictions for the next year right and there is one coming up for 2022 but basically last year one of our predictions was exposed apis will be the next attack vector right for enterprise breaches and um, as mentioned cloud is all api based we have uh docker kubernetes all these new technologies and, and different microservices they all have apis in in, in the background right so why not uh, uh, focus more on that and understand how they work and, and really get started with APIs. So as I mentioned, right, APIs are basically everywhere now and, and the, uh, the chances of you facing uh, a web application when doing some pen testing or buggy bounty that has an API uh, in the back end, those are very high. So why not starting or not start learning that as well? So uh, earlier this year, I found, uh, I found and reported uh, a vulnerability in our application that it's kind of basic, right? And, and we, we seen that a lot, but it's kind of, this is a training platform for testing and QA and A and, and basically just changing the IDs here of the users without being logged in I was able to uh, get user information, right? And I reported that and, and they, they fix it and everything. Okay, let's, let's just, uh, okay, maybe can I start with that? Can I start testing APIs using my previous knowledge of web application security? Yes, of course, that's great. Okay, now let's understand what APIs are and why they're created. So APIs application programming interface, right? They're a way, right, of exposing your application to other people, to third parties without revealing your source code, right? So you expose uh, specific endpoints of your application and tell them how to use it. And, and basically that's, that's how they communicate with your application, right? So it's made to access and interact with a specific application and it have become the de facto standard on software development all over the world, right? But there are different types of authentication. So with web applications before you had, okay, username and password and, and, and that's it. You get a session ID, you get a cookie and, uh, and that was it, right? There was how, how the application managed your access uh, throughout while your session was valid. With APIs, there are different things, right? First, there is JSON Web Tokens or JOTS, right? There was a great presentation this morning by Adrian on JOT uh, attacks and vulnerabilities as well. There is OAuth, which is not authentication, it's more for authorization as well, and you have like OpenID Connect and everything. And there is the basic uh, uh, authentication or Base64 encoded, which is not recommended anymore. So there are a few things that you need to be aware of when starting to pen test with uh, APIs. The first thing, and I, I really like uh, this kind of uh, checklist or mind maps, right? Uh, this David Sopas from Checkmarks created this project called the Mind API. Um, and basically is, is a mind map of what do you do when you start testing an API? What can you, uh, what you, should you look for? What kind of different issues, different types of APIs, for example, in this presentation, I'm mostly focusing on REST APIs, right? But there are different types of APIs such as GraphQL, SOAP, and others, right? So with, with that checklist in mind, then you know like what kind of types of testing, if there is an ID or another vulnerability on the API. So I really recommend taking a look at this project I also posted that, uh, the link for the project on the Slack channel, and you can take a look. But, okay, how, how do I start, right? I, I found there is an API on the application, so how do I start? First things first, you need to know that APIs have version, right? So when new software is released for the application, for the API, you create new versions of that API as well. 
And that application, the different versions, right? You can, like the previous versions can have less security than the newer ones or can um, work differently, right? So how about doing some path manipulation instead of using an endpoint on version three, you try the same endpoint on version one and see if that works, see if there's less authentication or less enforcement of some kind of authorization, right? Basic things. Other thing that's very common and I showed earlier is what if the endpoint receives an ID, right? How do you understand that pattern? If that ID, it, maybe it's, it's a number, is it sequential? Can I try finding the next value or the previous one? Would that work? Would that validate if I have access or permissions to access that information or not? It was just, okay, see if you have a valid token, a valid authorization and that's it, right? Trying different methods, trying instead of get, try post. Instead of post, try put or delete, which are kind of the four main methods of REST APIs. Another thing to uh, keep in mind is when using automated tools with APIs, they may behave differently and you can get a lot of false positives. For example, a lot of um, APIs may return 200 okay on every call that you make, but then the real status code is inside a JSON on that response body, right? So that may confuse your, your tool thinking that, oh, now I find this different vulnerabilities and, and you can test it out, but it, it's not real. Right? So keeping those uh, mindsets, it's very important. So some common security issues on APIs uh, out there as uh, we can see that some of them are similar to web applications, right? So you have authentication and session management. How does the API control uh, gives you a JWT token? How does it invalidate your token? How can it, it know that your token can access only your user information, not another user? So testing those things. And also authorization, right? Authorization has become the, the first item on the top 10 2021, right? Access controls. It's all about access controls because it's hard to validate that with automated tools, right? So you need someone uh, uh, like the knowledge of a pen tester or a security analyst to understand how the business logic of the application works and then to validate those issues, right? Also with IDORs, right? Or forced browsing uh, as, as they are also called, right? Uh, as I show like with different um, IDs or different endpoints, you can try to access information that maybe you're not supposed to. Other issues are input validation, right? Input validation is very important for a web application and the same is for APIs. Every kind of input that's uh, received by the user, right, from the server side, it should be validated before uh, used on anywhere on the application and can cause issues. Uh, another thing is hand error handling, right? Understanding the technologies of the API, you can try to find an endpoint that doesn't exist, see how the API reacts to it, and, and yeah, go from there. Try to gather as much information as possible. And of course, APIs can be abused and they can be used for scraping data out of your uh, application as well, like um, such as what the case happened with Facebook and, and Cambridge Analytica a few years ago, right? So implementing uh, proper rate limiting and throttling to avoid those kind of malicious users from taking uh, advantage of your API is also important. So here is an example from the Drift Shop itself, right? Um, here's the web version of the Drift Shop that's available online for you to try it out. And here I just access a web a web uh, endpoint that doesn't exist, and now I get this kind of stack trace the her, her information from the Drift Shop itself, and that gives me a lot of information about how the application works. I see internal 
uh, files and internal paths, right? Um, and, and so this can help an attacker to find out more about your API. So let's try something else. Um, now I'm doing a GET request on the API endpoint users, right? And that would probably list the users or at least my information from my user if I'm authenticated to that API, right? I'm assuming. But I got this 401 error. And this 401 error is very common in APIs. It's 401 unauthorized. It usually means when you're not authenticated or you don't have enough permissions, excuse me, to access that information. Okay, but what if I change this method? What if I change that instead of get, I use post to create a new user? So that's what I did. Basically using this tool called Postman, which I'm gonna talk about more later, later on, right? I use the same request that I did before from get and I change it to post, right? Could have done it with curl, I could have done it with something else. I tried it, I, I decided to use Postman. And here you can see on the left side that my, uh, the body of my request is a JSON file with a new user being created. So I have the email, I have the password, and I have the role, which I'm setting my user as admin. And you can see from the, the bottom on, on the left image, right, that this request was a success. The API wasn't validating. Uh, anything from the post request, right? So I was able to create a new user and this user has the role admin. So this kind of, it seems very simple, but it can happen on real life APIs as well. And I was able to log into the application and that was it for this, this issue. Okay. These are, this is interesting. Maybe you already know uh, about these topics and you already started your API journey. So how can I learn more or maybe improve my skills on API? So usually I tell uh, people that are starting in AppSec or, or learning about application security that the top 10 is a must read for anyone in AppSec. But there are so many different top tens now. You have the standard top ten, you have the proactive controls, you have the mobile, and now the API security. So if you're starting with API testing or you want to uh, improve your skills there, I would say start with API security, which is basically a top ten list of the most common risks on APIs. And it's fairly recent. It was developed uh, and published in 2019, so two years ago. And although it has similarities with the standard top 10, it has a lot of specific issues related to the API. And it's, and it's free for anyone to take a look and read. Another content that's really interesting that I'd like to highlight here is this uh, API, API application.security website or the Contra OWASP top 10 for API, which is basically an online training ground that you can try different issues and different vulnerabilities without needing to setting up a lab and downloading different tools, right? You can try everything on your browser. So this is a great resource to at least get a, a high level overview of API security issues and then make common vulnerabilities related to the APIs. Okay, now let's go to the tools, right? And there are different tools that you can use. There are like, I, if I just uh, spend this talk talking about tools, it wouldn't be enough. But I, I brought some of uh, some tools that you may already be familiar with and some different tools that usually it's focused more on the developers and Q&A, but can also be used for testing security on APIs as well. First tool, of course, I have to talk about curl, right? The command line tool, which is interesting for validating and making uh, requests to web applications. So it's easy to use. Um, but yeah, I, I don't wanna sound too kind of, oh yeah, I know about curl, right? Yeah, I know. You probably have already, if you work with InfoSec and, and played with web applications, you already used curl before. But one thing that I want to mention here that's important about curl 
is that you can copy your requests as curl from many different security tools. So if you haven't done that before on your web browser or burp or, or uh, even zap, you can copy the request as curl and replicate that on your terminal. And that's very handy for developers validating your findings, right? So let's say you found a vulnerability on a specific API. Uh, um, the developer doesn't need to download burp or set, a, set up a proxy and, and with zap, for example, to validate your issue, right? Your findings. They can do that with the curl request that you can send on, for example, on your Jira ticket to submit the vulnerability and they can easily replicate that, uh, that finding. Second tool that I think it's really important here is Postman. Right? Postman is uh, a great tool for testing REST APIs. Right? It was developed for developers and Q&As, right? quality assurance of APIs. So it can, do, it can do send requests, save responses, add testing, and like a lot of automation. But it's really interesting because you can change uh, the methods really easy. You can save your, uh, your previous requests, right? And so basically you can do a lot of validation and testing of APIs and microservices. So that's, uh, and it it's works on any platform, right? So you can just download it and start using. That was the one that I used for the, uh, the juice shop demo before on the slide. And, and basically, it, it's very interesting to try it out. There's also this SOPY, which is kind of an older tool compared to Postman. It was created for targeting SOAP API testing, and now it has evolved for REST APIs, of course. So you can easily create some automated testing and functional testing, regression testing, and sometimes loading testing on, on your APIs as well and works with many different technologies, such as SOAP and REST and other ones, as, as I mentioned. Then we have Burp Suite. Oh, of course, we have to talk about Burp Suite, right? It's like one of the best uh, uh, security tools for application testing, right? And also for APIs, because it has uh, the App Store where you have a lot of extensions and a lot of functionalities that you can add into the burp suite to test your APIs. As uh, Adrian showed earlier this morning, uh, testing uh, job tokens with Joseph, and there's other uh, extensions as well that I can, I can add to the Slack channel to, to show you more information about that. But burp can do a, a lot of things from uh, proxying, scanning, spidering your API, for example, if you have the uh, Swagger files or the open API information, which lists all your endpoints and how to make the request your endpoints, which parameters uh, does it accept, right? So you can do that as well. Um, next one is the OWASP Zap, which is the uh, kind of the web proxy version from OWASP, right? It has uh, over 10 years now of development is developed by Simon Bennett and now a team of uh, open source developers. And it's ideal for beginners, right? Because it can, you can easily start some uh, scanning or attacking your web applications and APIs with Zap and it's free to use. And it also has some, uh, the application store similar to Burp. Actually, in fact, fun fact here, the OASP Zap was the one that started this kind of app store, a plugin store before, and, and then Burp implemented it as well. But it also allows the execution of manual testing, right? So you can proxy your application, uh, your request through to Zap, and you can try uh, tampering with different parameters and IDs and, and repeating some requests and, and getting some different responses as well. So that's interesting. But yeah, okay, now you mentioned some tools, but I, I wanna get my hands on experience. Right? I wanna try it out. So the free websites that I think uh, you can start right away practicing your API security skills. First is Juice Shop, right? Juice Shop, as I mentioned, it has this online version, which is linked here on the slide, but you can also download 
and uh, run on your on your machine as a Docker or on your EC2 instance, for example. And I think that's a better approach because you're you're kind of uh, in a sandbox and nobody has access to your juice shop uh, application and you can try different things and also tracks your scoreboard and all the challenges that you're uh, that you're solving. Another uh, portal here, another kind of um, website that has a lot of challenges and some of them include APIs is the Web Security Academy by Portswigger, right? has a lot of ch different challenges there for different uh, APIs. Um, for GraphQL, I think there is one as well, and REST APIs, of course. And the last one is the one that I mentioned earlier, the Contra OAuth Top 10 for API, where it's like a platform where you go step by step, right? It's like a tutorial, really, on, on how to exploit different vulnerabilities, right? And, and you don't need to have your environment set up. You can try everything from the browser, you just need to follow along and see what uh, different vulnerabilities you can find on that specific API. So just to summarize here, I, I know that I don't have a lot of time, but basically APIs are different than web applications, right? You can still use your uh, knowledge and leverage that to test your APIs, but it's important to focus on the different things, the different vulnerabilities, different aspects. That's where usually you're gonna find interesting and, and cool stuff when testing APIs. Uh, it has similar tools, right? So if you already know, you can have, uh, for example, SQL injection or, or kind of uh, injection vulnerabilities on APIs as well, similar to web applications. And you can also use similar tools uh, as Burp and Zap, as I mentioned, but it, others might bring you different results and might be even better for a specific scenario. So if I can give you one uh, recommendation to start testing with APIs, if you're just beginning your kind of journey there, I would say start with the basics, right? Don't try to go uh, too, too deep and too technical when, when you're just beginning. Focus on understanding IDOR, for example, or forced, forced browsing. And why is this happening, right? Is this because of a, a server side issue? Is this because of a vulnerability on authorization or authentication? What's going on here? Also, yeah, authentication, authorization. They've become uh, um, one of the top issues, right? Especially with authorization there on the top 10. And it's really hard to find those vulnerabilities in an automated fashion, right? So tools will have a hard time flagging those. So you need the, uh, the mindset of an attacker, like someone uh, as a pen test or a security analyst to understand the application and the API and try these different uh, scenarios and different vulnerabilities. And lastly, but not least, Try different methods, try different versions of the API, see if they work, see how the application behaves. Sometimes just exploring the application with those basic requests can give you a lot of information on the behavior of the application and also provide you with uh, some different findings. I think that was it for my presentation. I hope I didn't wait over time and I'm happy to answer any questions if you may have them.